Hello all. Welcome to the web application pen testing course at Pentester Academy. Now in the last video, we looked at CSRF token bypass with XSS, but there were a couple of things probably which we wouldn't be comfortable with, right, as a pen tester. Now, what we had done was we'd sent a link to the vulnerable website uh, to the victim and the victim then clicked on the link and loaded the page up and the XSS payload ran and things happened, right? Now, in the real world, probably the victim might find it very suspicious to receive a link for let's say bank.com from someone unknown to him or someone on a social media website, right? This is where to probably think that the victim might load up the site for us uh, is something which is probably an oversimplification. Ideally, what we would want is that the victim lands on the attacker controlled website and this could pretty much be any site on the internet, right, which the attacker controls entirely or has found injection vulnerabilities in. And at that point, the attacker should be able to go ahead and conduct the same XSS based CSERF token stealing and do whatever he did uh, in the last video. So how do we do this? So in order to accomplish this, we are going to use something called iframes. Very simply put, iframe is an HTML tag which allows us to embed and display a web page within a web page. Now, this embedded page can belong to the same domain or can belong to pretty much any other domain or site in the World Wide Web. Now keep in mind that all the origin policies and everything apply within the frame, which is the attacker, even if he's hosting the parent site, will not be able to read data from within the iframe and hence there is no interaction possible. So what can the attacker do? Well, he can still run his little XSS payloads if he can pass them properly and then he can use those payloads to post data to his own website, as we shall see in the demo. And as I mentioned, what he cannot do is read data directly from the embedded frame. But the good news is pretty much in almost all cases, uh, it isn't required to do that as far as CSRF evasion with XSS is concerned. So let's go ahead and do this demo together. Now I'm going to be using the same example as in the last video. And I'm going to use the base payload which we had created as the starting point. So I'm going to go ahead, create a quick web server. And this web server is going to have its root directory as this directory where I'm going to create my HTML files. I'm going to start my Python web server on port 80. I can go in here. And there it is. This is running, right? So let's create a very simple HTML file in here. I'm going to call it CSRF XSS iframe. Let's make this an HTML file. really just a quick POC of what we'd like to do, right? Now inside this, let's make this an appealing website. Welcome to an interesting website on the World Wide Web. 
let's save this go back in here refresh the page open this up in a new tab and we see that this is an attacker controlled website right and the victim can land on this site by clicking on a social media link or something else now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and conduct the attack on this website through this page so let's go ahead and do that let's create an iframe in here I'm gonna say iframe source equals which is what we're going to paste and let me go ahead and put this link in here I still have to put in my XSS payload so I'm going to go back here and take the XSS payload which we created in the last demo just encode it paste it in there save the file go back here let's check our network monitor just so we know what's happening then hit and enter and there you go we got the alert as expected as you can see that account deletion for John successful and we see the post request which we so much so expect right fantastic now at this point if you note the third party website the victim site has actually opened up inside an iframe in here now this is something which is not desirable at all right and this is where what you're going to do is make this a hidden iframe so let me show you how to do that it's actually more simple than you realize all we have to do is apply a style and basically go ahead and say display none can save this did i mess up the payload in any way Hmm. I can see that there was an enter or something which happened in there. Let me just copy the payload back again. Don't want my payload to break. That wouldn't be nice. Now when I go back and enter there you go I still get the JavaScript alert but if you notice on the page there is absolutely no visible notification of anything happening right no notification at all apart from this JavaScript fantastic now what we're going to do is this JavaScript isn't of much use to us this little alert so I'm going to remove that and rather I'm going to now post to the attacker server right now you can use the image technique as I've shown you in the JavaScript for pen testers course alternately you can actually do this using a new XML HTTP request so I'm gonna say request to dot open it's gonna be a get request and this is going to post the response to the attacker server Just an arbitrary URL which I just framed. So make it synchronous. Let's do a request to dot send. There we go. 
Now keep in mind, we can easily post to the attacker server. And if you're wondering now about the, you know, same origin, the cross origin policies and all of that, when we come to cores, what you will realize is uh, basically the website to which you're posting, right, the get or any of the other method, that's the one which gets to decide whether you're allowed to do this or not. And for simple methods like get, it anyway goes through. And because the attacker controls that site, there isn't something we need to worry about here at all. Okay, let me just quickly check the syntax, make sure there aren't any syntactual errors. This looks okay to me. I'm gonna copy this out. Go back to my encoder, paste it, encode it, copy it out. Go back in here, delete the existing payload. Ugh. paste this new payload in there. Save it. Now this is our attacker server, right? So we should see an interesting request come in here. Let's go back. Let's keep our network monitor on. Right, so if you notice, post went through we get the response and then now we are basically posting to the attacker server. Of course, there is no such file in there at this point, but the attacker could write a script to receive whatever data he wants exfiltrated through the application. Now in this case, the data we exfiltrated was the response to the delete account call, which was account deletion for John successful. Fantastic, right? So you can clearly see how we've kind of optimized the problem and now the user is only visiting a third party site controlled by the attacker directly or where again he's found an injection based vulnerability. Now once the victim is there, an iframe can be used which can be hidden from the victim's view through which the XSS attack can be exploited the CSERF token can be picked up. And once the CSERF token is picked up, further requests can be made in the application, like in this case, deleting John's account. Right? Fantastic. So hopefully you had fun with this video. And if you're enjoying your time at Pentester Academy, please recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.